Hola, buenas tardes. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, and I'm welcoming you to today's En Casa con la Plaza. En Casa con la Plaza Cocina. It's a Monday, 3 p.m., so of course we're going to have our cooking demonstration for you. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. If you're on Zoom, please use the chat feature to uh, ask questions. Let us know where you're viewing from, if you'd like. And also the Q&A, we'll be uh, checking those out throughout the program. I'll be passing on the information over to my colleague, Jimena, who I'll be introducing in a couple minutes. If you're on Facebook, welcome, bienvenidos. Please use the comment section to ask questions, make comments. Let us know how what your experiences are like in the kitchen as well. Uh, we'd like to thank our, our sponsors, uh, Kaiser Permanente. We have CVS Health Aetna, Union Pacific Foundation, California Humanities, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Institute for Museum and Library Sciences. So thank you so much for that sponsorship. It keeps us going and it keeps these programs coming from our home to yours. In this case, my home here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. A couple updates. Uh, we are open, of course, uh, except for Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, during the week, 12 to 5, and on weekends from 10 to 5, our gift store, our museum gift store, uh, which is called La Tienda is also open for your uh, retail pleasure. Uh, let's see, all of our exhibits are open, but this is the last two weeks to enjoy Carlos Almaraz, um, ex, um, Carlos Almaraz Evolution of Form, uh, some artwork by the, a prominent Chicano icon. Uh, and so also Frank Romero is going to the 1984 Olympics. And then of course, uh, our latest, Temporary exhibit, Patriotism in Conflict, Fighting for Country y Comunidad. And next week, I, I think I'll let Jimena speak about what's going to happen next week. So with that, let me introduce to you our Director of Programming and Culinary Arts, Jimena Martin. Please join us, Jimena. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Alberto. Yes, we finally have some great news. Uh, we're going to have a soft opening of La Cocina, uh, La Plaza's uh, newest extension of our story, our voices, highlighting Mexican cuisine. So please stop on by starting Monday, uh, tentative hours from 12 to 5, Monday through Friday. Please come see our beautiful exhibition, which is on corn, our beautiful La Tiendita, beautiful items uh, for the kitchen and the exhibition, and eventually, once everything's safe with COVID, we will be having in-person, um, hands-on cooking classes, demo classes. So very exciting times for us, a long time waiting. But thank you, Leonardo. But today, um, Instagram has been kind uh, through this pandemic season, um, finding talent from home. And with that said, I've been finding talent through Instagram and uh, bringing in new folks into the fold. And with that said, I have a brand new chef that's with us. She's plant-based, is um, Janet Flores, um, organic in LA. Um, she's an Angelina, has been working in fine dining for over 10 years and has worked in most respected kitchens, for example, AOC, Platt and Food and Wine and Botanica. Um, she grew up inspired by her mother's authentic Mexican home cooking, as well as the diverse flavors that are found here in Los Angeles. Um, she's also known for her plant-based health and support. Um, but without further ado, we have Janet Flores, a plant-based chef here from LA, who is gonna be making pozole, Jalisco, uh, con chile rojo, y jackfruit, also known as yaca in Spanish. Hi, Janet, how are you? Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Pleasure, Hi. pleasure is ours. Please tell us a little bit more about your culinary journey. How did you become a chef and what do you all do? Um, and who and what has inspired you? Sure, well, um, actually in my 20s, 10 years ago, I mean, I was doing makeup and I decided, you know, it's never too late. Um, I was like, what do I really wanna do? What do I love? What do I do for fun? And um, and what I felt was a skill that was gonna help me in my future for, you know, to help teach others, um, my family, eventually something that I knew would not only be, um, you know, income, but I wanted to love what I did and have a skill that I can actually use and cooking. So that was it for me. Um, and it was specifically um, plant-based. So I became vegan plant-based. And so I said, well, 
I know growing up Mexican eating, you, I mean, everything, you know, home cooking from carne asada, tacos, I mean, you name it. So I said, I want to still make plant-based food delicious without compromising flavor. So I was like, I need to learn and I need these skills. So I decided to start working in kitchens um, and pretty much worked my way from the bottom up. Um, I decided at that point, I was at an age where I was like, well, culinary school was just extremely expensive. And I knew because I had the heart and the passion at I was 30, I said, you know what, at this point, whatever I, I know I'm going to do this, it's, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to really work hard. And so I said, I'm not going to do the culinary you know, school route because it's, it was, I couldn't afford it. So I was like, I'm going to work at kitchens that I love and that I want to like learn from. So yeah, I started from the bottom up and um, started prepping and it was not easy. And it's like worked my way and worked my way to different kitchens and um, a lot of work, you know, it was usually probably for the most part, I was, I was always like the only woman in the kitchen working with like menly men, you know, so it was, it was a lot of testosterone in the kitchen, but it helped me also kind of like toughen me up and like understand that culture and that environment of like okay like the, how is this going to help me and it has it's like made me pretty tough you know um as far as like going for things I want in life or just like being in situations in kitchens where I'm like okay I've done this I'm not you know um yeah it's just made me uh, have experience that's really helped me and in, in other aspects of life working in kitchens so really? yeah, or, I, oops I'm sorry way to um, working under a chef, Sue Van Gogh, that was like probably like the ultimate for me. And after working at AOC, um, I said, okay, after this, I'm going on my own. I've earned my stars and stripes. Let's do this. So um, I was, yeah, offered a job to work as a private chef after that. And I left. Oh, my God. You know, and I was like, I was like, yeah. So, so ever since then, I've been working pretty much for myself um, here and there, like helping with restaurants, like opening restaurants, helping with the menu, um, doing my own events and like retreats and stuff like that. So, and now I've got a couple things going on too. So yeah, it's been great. I'm really happy. I decided to do this. This was great. This is like it. <laughs> for now. Earlier, earlier when you and I were speaking, you know, we're talking about how the cuisine of Mexico, vegan and plant-based and that thing's been going, you know, back and forth. Uh, I know we had vegan chefs, but no, plant-based is such the word right now. Can you be so kind to describe what is the difference between a vegan chef or vegan cuisine and a plant-based? Sure. So I think that it can have, it's sort of changed the plant-based meaning, but for me, what, you know, experiencing this, living this, working around this, vegan tends to be a very strict word. And sometimes it does not allow room to grow in my opinion. And so I wanted to use honey. I wanted to use certain, you know, like bee pollen. I wanted to also, if some, if I needed to taste a food that had dairy in it, um, I'm going to try, you know, I, I need to learn as much as I can. So I don't want to limit myself or restrict myself. So I figured plant-based was just um, a, like, just an easier word to not be so intimidating for others. Um, because it is a little bit more open. Um, I've had clients who want wild you know, fish and salmon, and I'm open to that as well. So, but the primary um, element is vegetable, like mushrooms and cauliflower and chickpeas, very hearty foods, vegetables. Um, but again, it's not so strict as a vegan word, because it's me, it's like, you don't wear leather, you don't eat honey. It's just a lot, you know? And so I just figured this was just more of a, more relaxed. Yeah. It's a more approachable way of doing, um, and delicious as well. So can you be so kind, um, to walk us through the pozole a Jalisco con chile rojo and with, um, jackfruit. I know initially you, you were going to do it in with cauliflower. What was the shift, the, the shift from cauliflower to, um, jackfruit. And if you can talk a little bit about your process, about how to work with the jackfruit, please us. Sure. So cauliflower is great. You can use it. Um, I recommend if you're going to do it, um, it, it tends to get a little soggy if you want to keep it in the fridge for a couple of days. So I found that jackfruit um, kept its integrity and it was firmer and you can keep it in the fridge for longer. It's going to have a bite to it. Cauliflower is great if you want to eat it that day. 
you add it at the very end as you're boiling when you're done cooking at the very end you just close the pot it's cooked cooks super quick but the thing is it's still great but um i wanted to make something that i can keep in the fridge because the broth the pozole is tastes better the next day you know it's just been sitting and it's been marinating so i went with jackfruit but that that's it but you can use both but yeah jackfruit i, I think has more substance like a better bite do you have any tricks of the trade how to clean up the jackfruit and what type of jackfruit are you using fresh jackfruit or the canned jackfruit so fresh jackfruit is great it's a long process and actually um it takes a toll on your fingers it can be like it can actually hurt like it's great i, I think that's one of the best ways sure it's very natural but it's a long process and um i've done it before with my dad we were picking jackfruit and our fingers were hurting it was like whoever gets to pick the jackfruit i mean kudos to them because that is not an easy job so i found that um canned jackfruit depending on what's in the brine is awesome and it's easy this one i found at trader joe's um and it's been my favorite of all because the taste that it's not it does it's not so briny so there are many jackfruits you can try but this one particular at trader joe's it's really good if by chance we're not at Trader Joe's and we go to an Asian market or another market and we see another brand, I know in my past I've had to work with it hard. Do you have any tricks to work with a briny jackfruit? Sure. We're going to do this with this. Um, so what I would do is I would boil it twice. So you're going to make sure to get your water boiling, um, submerge the jackfruit, cover it up, maybe just like four inches above the jackfruit fresh water, boil it for about into boiling water, I would say for about, about 15 minutes. Dump out the water. This is if it's extra briny. This one you only need to do once. But if it's extra briny and has a funky taste, you can get rid of that, boil it twice. So get rid of that water and then bring back the jackfruit again into boiling water, 15 to 20 minutes, and that'll be fine. Like it'll clear out all that flavor. A double boil. So when you work with the jackfruit, I know there's like different pieces that are in the jackfruit. There's like little, like little balls, little things. Can you describe what stays in the recipe and what could be left out or the whole thing goes? Well, when you're cutting the whole jackfruit, the hardest piece I would get rid of. That's like, you can't even chew it. What's in the can, it's all good to go. Okay. Yeah, it's all good to go. I don't get rid of anything. I use everything. So you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Let's start cooking. All right, let's start cooking. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, my ingredients. Let me show you what I got here. So starting off with the broth that we're going to be making. So you can make a veg stock broth at home yourself. So I like to make my time. Um, I like to make things really good and um, and hearty. Again, not compromise flavor, but also we're all always in a hurry sometimes our, our time we're not here to like cook all day me in particular like you know like I like to do things right but if I can find ways to make it done quicker so this is an organic vegetable broth um, again you can make your own broth carrots onions celery a, a nice broth base this one's already done um, and I'm going to add to the broth shiitake powder shiitake um, it has umami again we're not using meat so shiitake powder, this I make myself. So it has that meat um, umaminess that you would get. I have dried shiitake that I blend in a blender. You could just buy dried shiitake at an Asian store. Usually this is filled up. As you can see, I've used it all up. I used it for everything. So um, I blended this. We're going to use shiitake powder for the broth as well. And bouillon. This is an organic vegetable bouillon. Normally, um, I know a lot of people use consomme, which is very popular, but consomme also has a lot of ingredients that I think, you know, we're progressing here, right? So like part of that is like, you know, being Latina, I'm very health conscious because I know, um, unfortunately, you know, we got to be healthier and I know we try and we're trying, but there's a lot of little things that we can do. Um, and so I try to like, substitute what I can. Um, and so that's part of my cooking as well. It's like, I want to show my community, my Hispanic community, like there, you can make anything. It just depends how you cook in your ingredients. We can make anything that your mom made, your grandma made, but we are just kind of doing, a, I wouldn't say even upgrade because I can't beat my grandma's cooking, but 
a little bit more health conscious because we do have ingredients now that we didn't have before back in the day. So this is a, a vegetarian bouillon and that's going to go in the stock. And for my Chile Jalisco, we're going to use um, Chile California, one Chile Huaquillo. Those are a little bit more mild and Chile de Arbol, which is spicy. So I like my um, pozole spicy. So I'm going with four chile de arbols. If you want it not so spicy, you can omit the chile de arbol. But we're going spicy with this one. And then I have um, onion and garlic. And that's for the chile. And also in the chile, I'm gonna add cumin. I'm gonna add clove, just a little bit of clove to that. And Mexican oregano as well, and peppercorn. So that's the chile. And then we have our toppings. So what I love about pozole, it's really a rustic, simple meal, but it's delicious. You know, you don't need so many things, um, but those are probably my favorite meals anyway. Um, so yeah, and we have cabbage here, we have rabanos, um, radish, and we have limes. And I have an avocado. I like it. my topping with avocado, it gives it a little bit of fat. So, and this is the jackfruit, of course. All right, or you so. get so you get started. We have Maria C. Carrillo. She says in Guerrero, Mexico, some people eat it. I guess the jackfruit with with egg, sardines, or chicharrón. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so different regions have their own. Yeah, I love that. So, I love see, that. so please yeah. continue. I'm sorry, just a little tidbit from our audience. Yeah, I love that. That's what I love. Mexico is huge. There's like so many different recipes, and so um, this is maíz morado. So why I prefer um purple corn, um, it has more flavor to it. My mom actually told me that she's like, you gotta use maíz morado. Um, it does have more flavor to it and it's actually healthier. It has more fiber, it has more protein and actually antioxidants, which is what a bonus, right? Where so do you get your red corn? Cause you know, we're LA Bay. So where do you suggest picking up some red corn here in the city? Yeah, you can actually, this I got from La Vallarta. It's already pre-cooked, but they also have it like where it's totally raw when you have to boil it. It's another step. Great. Probably going to taste, you know, even better to be honest, but, um, this is delicious. Um, it's a little firmer than the, um, white mice. So it takes a little bit longer to cook, but it just works out anyways with what we're doing. All right. So we can get started. All right. So I'm going to start with my jackfruit. So we have one can of jackfruit here. And actually, we are going to just, I'm going to slice this. So I'm going to slice it as to mock meat, but it's going to have a good bite. As you can see, I'll show you what I have here. Or chicken, pork, whatever you would want to. So it's still, you just want to slice it so it's got its, um, a nice bite to it. It's not too thick. So it's pleasant when you're, when you're eating it. You don't have a huge piece of, you know, jackfruit. All right, so we got that going easy. And I'm gonna get a pot here. And another thing I do use ceramic pots. Ceramics pots are very healthy and um, non chemicals. There's no chemical to the ceramic pots. And in Mexico, actually, back in the day, they, that's, all, that's what they used with ceramic pots. Yeah, las cazuelas. Las cazuelas, yeah. all different sizes. Um, <laughs> And for those who come visit us next week in La Cocina, we actually have a beautiful semi-permanent exhibition called Cazuelas y un Recetario. And it's a collection of different um, shapes, vessels, cazuelas that were used um, in a, with the family. Uh, but again, back in Mexico, they come in different sizes. Um, there's one chef in Mexico, I can't recall. Um, that's his cooking show. Everything was done with cazuelas. Oh, I love that. I'll have to watch that for sure. So I have the water boiling for the um, jackfruit. Meanwhile, I'm going to boil some water to rehydrate my chilies. And, but first with my chilies, I'm going to take out the seeds. We don't want that. And that's just super easy. Deseeding them. Um, you could open them and de-vein them as well since the veins have a lot of the spiciness, but I'm 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 gonna keep, yeah, I'm okay with that. Um 
but definitely take out the seeds. That's where all the spicy, very, very spicy. Too, too hot to handle. My dad would probably like it, but not me. And I can't eat it. It's never spicy enough for my dad. I'm like, I'll make it like 10 chilies. He's like, no. I'm like, how do you, do you how do you eat that? That's just... <clears throat> All right, so. Going. Water is boiling, we're gonna rehydrate this. And another thing about Bosole, a little fun fact that I looked up. In ancient civilization, this is where Bosole comes from. I thought this was really cool. Um, the soup was a way, it was used as a way to cook the hearts of their enemies, okay? And it would be a way to get parts of their captured enemies mixing human sacrifice. I know this is kind of wild, but they would, so say they would sacrifice that and it would be a way to commune with everybody and celebrate to the gods. This is the history. Oh, really? Not. I mean, that's my friend. And then, you know, then when the Spanish came in the 1500s, they said, no, we're not doing cannibalism. We're not, we're not going to use hearts. So then they start, started using meats and forks and, and all that. Is it true? I don't know. I thought that was like pretty interesting, right? That's what they teach us nowadays in Mesoamerican times as a way for the gods, sacrificing folks and little cannibalism to move yeah. forward as an empire. Right, exactly. I, I had no idea. And all right, so we are rehydrating this. You can also boil boil them, the chewies, but I found this is really easy too. Um, it's just hot water. We're going to um, soften them to make sure that they are, maybe I would say like 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes. So we got that going. And let's see, we can get our stock going. So you're so, saying you used to work at AOC and that's such a lovely restaurant there. Any star sightings while you were there? Gosh, you know what? Not at that one, at others, yes. I'm sure I just missed that. Oh, um, you know, oh, actually the Mexican cook, he's um, on everything right now. He has like a cooking uh, competition show with uh, David Ramsey. Um, he's, he's on the cooking show with David Ramsey. The oh, Aaron Sanchez? Yeah, he would go there. He loved the, uh, we had chicken and waffles. I think it was the chicken and waffles he would get. Yeah, he was a fan of that for sure. Uh, but at other restaurants, oh yeah, I mean, you know, working in Los Angeles, it's pretty fun because they're everywhere here. They're, they, they literally are. So right now I'm gonna get the broth going. So there's the veg stock there. I'm gonna add some of my mushroom powder. Again, I do recommend it's really easy. You can just buy your dried uh, mushroom shiitake powder in particular. Shiitake has more flavor and you just blend it up in a blender. And then you'll have, you know, this really great, amazing powder here. So I did like two tablespoons of that. And then I'm gonna add some bouillon because that does have a lot of flavor. And I'm going to get this to boil, simmer, boil for about 15 minutes. And then that's going to go, depending on um, the thickness of the chile, I'll see the broth. And if it's a little bit thick, I just add a little bit of water to that. But we'll get to that. So we have that going. Okay. I jack fruit and we'll get, let's see what I can start doing, the onions and garlic. So this goes really well with flavor, a lot of garlic and onion. Um, I've made it a few times and it just needs it. And what's great here is that you could, that going there, chilies. Yeah. 
this is just gonna be a thick slice. So nothing, nothing fancy here. It's all gonna go in the blender. Again, this is, a, for me, it's, it's such a great recipe because if you have low on time and you just want some good home cooking, this is awesome. So any other questions? <laughs> you do, just let me know. Let's see, we have some saludos. Uh, Lourdes T. Monson and hi from Kentfield, California. Hello. So, so right now, um, are you catering or also how do we find you? Like where can we find you? Yeah, so um, at Organic in LA, that's my website, um, Organic in LA, you can go in there and see what I do. Um, I do have a, a retreat coming up that I'll be cooking for, a yoga retreat. And then I have um, a couple, of, uh, well, it's still in the works, but it's a couple um cooking segments that I have coming up on TV, but I'll let you know about that. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, we, um, we'll see, we'll see. It's happening, you know, I'm like, I'm like, it's happening. But I'll let you know as soon as that's out. And just keeping busy. And then I have a couple of work opportunities as well. Um, so I just kind of have to see what works, but I feel like, yeah, this is, you know, just kind of finding what works and, and um, it's just really, I'm really grateful right now. Like things are just sort of flowing and, but yeah, as my, it, for me, it's like, if I can just help with my food and, and give information on how to cook healthy and delicious, that's my main goal and my, my purpose and see where that takes me. You know, then I, I love cooking for friends and like teaching family about this and talking about it um, because I think health is so important. You know, it's our wellness, right? Absolutely. And again, I was like talking earlier when we're looking for chefs for La Cocina for the cooking classes, it, there's a lot, there are many more vegan and uh, plant-based chefs than regular chefs that do carne asada or whatever. So it's just interesting how things have shifted like from compared to 10 years ago where 10 years ago was not so easy for folks who specialized in uh, plant-based cuisine. Yeah, it's just really blown up. It's like, it's it's the thing right now. But again, I think it's important also, plant-based is great, but like that's the difference is a lot of vegan food is just not healthy because there's a lot of fake meats and and unhealthy preservatives. But if you keep it whole foods, plant-based, you're, you're set, you know? You can keep everything. That's why there's nothing like home cooking. Home cooking is it. And I'm very fortunate my mom cooked for us because that was something that's already in me. Um, there's nothing better and there's nothing healthier because you know exactly what's going in your food. I mean, so yeah, I love to eat out here and there, of course. But there, for me, there's nothing like home cooking. And I think if more of us just cooked at home, we would be more even healthier, you know. But yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully, segments like these that we've been doing for the past year and a half, I believe, so that people are inspired. Um, seeing, you know, we're not in fancy restaurants; we're in a home kitchen um, with basic ingredients, and how you two can cook at home and not just watch it on TV, you know, Food Network style, and observe, but actually see that you can are easy enough that um, and be inspired to make these recipes back at home. I think you're right. Yeah, it's just about putting the information out there. And a lot of times it's just spreading the word, right? People like knowing what's going on and having the information. So this is just a rough chop. I'm doing two small onions or medium size. This one's a little smaller. Um, and the reason I'm not boiling the, the onion, um, I find that the raw onion has so much flavor. And once I cook it anyway, I'm going to cook it down it really calms the flavor down. It's not going to be intense, but it actually gives it a kick, which is really good. Because so I know that some, you know, you can also boil the onions, but this is definitely the way to go, I think. So we got onions in here. And raw garlic. I'm going to do four cloves of raw garlic.
know, raw garlic is so much better than the stuff that's in those little glass containers. Definitely. You, really, you can really taste the difference. Definitely. I'm actually going to take just a little bit of onion out. That's a lot. Maybe I'll save that for the topping. Okay. Um, Janet, I have here um, Holly Lynn Purser says, I love pozole, but haven't made it since I went plant based. So this is helpful and looks so delicious. Um, do you have a cookbook? I'm working on one. I need, that's my 2022, like I need to get it done. I started last year and so much, I was, but it's coming. Yeah, I'm working on it. I mean, it's going to be a LA based, influenced LA Mexican brunch. So it's going to be brunch. So this will be part of it actually. Well, once you have um, your book in, please let us know so we can have you back on here in Cocina. Or you can have a book signing in La Cocina Tienda where we can oh sell. Gosh. We can have like a tasting and have a book signing and have you there present your book. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, maybe I can make a little something, right? That would be great. So I'm going to add the chapter to the boiling water. And we're going to just let it boil for about 15 minutes. Again, if your jackfruit is very briny, you're going to want to double boil it. Rinse and then reboil to get all the, the funkiness out. All right, so we're just going to do that. So these chilies have are pretty much rehydrated. Back here in the blender, we have onion. We have garlic. We have about one and a half, one full onion and half of a small onion in here. And then I'm going to add some bouillon, bouillon, veg bouillon to this. So I like to layer my flavors. There is also bouillon and mushroom in the broth. And the more that I find that what I was, what I, how I was taught is layering the flavors is just gonna be more flavor. It just enhances everything. So we have bouillon, onion, garlic. We're gonna add some Mexican oregano. And the difference between Mexican oregano, you do wanna use Mexican oregano, is uh, Mexican oregano, I did maybe about one teaspoon of that. Mexican oregano um, has more of like a lemon flavor to it or Mediterranean flavor has more mint to it. So there is a difference. Yes, so um, you can find that I'm sure like at the Leyata Mexican store, maybe anywhere now I feel like, but in case they don't, I do recommend it does make a difference to getting specifically Mexican oregano. And right here we, we have whole peppercorn. I like whole peppercorn because it's got more of a bite to it. We're not gonna add a lot in freshness, I'll do like three or four, it gets pretty strong. And what I'm doing different, um, my mom doesn't really use too much of the cumin, but I changed it up a little bit. This is cumin, ground cumin. So this is about one tablespoon. It's on the recipe there that I have for everyone, but um, yeah, I can do about one tablespoon of cumin. Um, and then just a pinch of cloves. And cloves just has a nice aromatic flavor to it, which I love on all my chilies. Just a pinch of that. And just a tiny bit of salt. It already has the bouillon, so we're not gonna go heavy on it. But with um, all the liquid that we have here, it does, it does need it. And we're gonna do four cups of water to that. Four cups. I, I'm going to guesstimate my four cups here. Okay. And I always use clean water, never tap, because it makes a difference in the flavor as well. Filtered water. All these little things make a difference in the flavor and how clean your food is. So we have that going. Already know that. And then I'll taste as I go. And if you need something else, we'll just, it's not like baking where it's very exact. You can play with it when it's just cooking. It's a little, it's a little um kinder in that regard. You can just throw things in if you feel like it. Let's see. I'm gonna cover that up. Okay, bear with me, it's gonna get a little loud here. 
Oh, well, I need the chilies, don't I? All right. I'm like, why isn't it turning red? So I'm cutting off the little stems of the chile de arbol. And here we go with this. And I'll add a little bit of this. I don't have the whole thing. It's a little bitter. Some people would have the whole uh, chili water. It is a little bitter. So I only added about half of the water, but you can add the whole thing if, if you want, you know, it's, it's up to you. But we'll do that here, all right. Okay. Very well blended. Now with the colander, let's see, let's see how the jack looks going. Give the jack feel like five more minutes there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this chili to my broth, but I want my broth to give it you know, a little bit more time so that the flavors enhance and that's cooking and simmering. And then I'll just clean up here so that I can get ready to slice up my cabbage. So yeah, my whole thing with cooking is, is you know, how can I make it so if you work seven, you know, if you work five days a week, you're a mom, you're, you know, it's, it's a lot. You want to come home, you still want to have that nice dish, but maybe you don't want to spend four hours in the kitchen. There's little corners you can cut. It's still going to be authentic as it gets. It's just, we, we just can make it easier on, on everybody, I think. And that's, that's my whole thing with cooking. I'm like, I still want it. I don't want to ever compromise the taste, but how can I make this work? So I'm not there all day in the kitchen. That's how I like, that's how I look at it. Do you have any food prep ideas for us? Little shortcuts? Well, you know, like having your, uh, I mean, you can even make your own veg broth at home and freeze it and always have veg broth going. Um, let's see. I love having mushrooms all always in the fridge. Uh, mushrooms and onions, that's an easy, you know, taco as being plant-based. Um, with shallots, some mushrooms and shallots, put it in a tortilla, easy to go, you know, great. Um, other prep ideas, I like to have black beans. I mean, this is, a, this is I think, very common in Mexican families. We always have beans at home, whether it's Peruvian, pinto, black beans. My favorite is black beans, but I'll always have black beans in the fridge. So it's, they're just, it's just common. So if I'm hungry, it's got my protein, have an avocado. But yeah, um, things like I that, think, I can't think are wrong. Salsa, I think, I like that. I think the other salsa. thing too, when you go plant-based, you know, besides, you know, coming home, prepping, having all these little things here and there, but also is trying to find a balance with you know the carbohydrates and the vegetables and the protein uh, to make like a Buddha bowl. So you're able to incorporate all these different things. Cause I know it's it's hard to come home and start slicing and dicing and versus just having some things that are already pre like on a Sunday, cut up those mushrooms, cut up those um, um, onions and spice them or have some quinoa or have some brown rice. Um, yeah. That way you kind of diversify and just it's kind of good to go ready. Either you can heat it up or you can have it cold at room temp. Yes, I love that. Um, I actually love having quinoa prepped. I like it to make um, tempeh that's already braised, marinated. Uh, tempeh is fermented soybean. Um, and they're like, I slice them up and I make them into like these barbecue tempehs. They're always in the fridge. Um, I always have avocados. But again, quinoa, I have some greens, I have spinach, then I got my salad, you know? I'll make a tahini dressing, it's always in the fridge. Tahini dressing is just tahini, lime juice, um, a little bit of salt and pepper, cayenne, it's always in the fridge. That way you get home, you're hungry, 
if you want, want to cook one thing, just saute up the mushrooms, if that's one thing, or cauliflower is wonderful. So, you know, saute up the cauliflower with onion and you have your quinoa, you have your tahini dressing that can stay in the fridge for weeks. Mm -hmm. Easy from home, a nice half of avocado, get your healthy fat. Um, and you got your spinach and your quinoa and slice up some tomato. Like I love having that kind of stuff just ready. Um, yeah, that, I think that's the toughest part is when you transition from the usual diet of, you know, salami or cold cuts and cheese and things that are, you know, prepackaged, you know, that we're so used to, it's easy, good to go versus now you really have to be thoughtful and plan and see what works um, and map yeah. out the week, you know, to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I, yeah. And I think it's great because a lot of times we're eating out because we're like, Oh, I have to go home and cook, you know? But if you can always have like your staples, you know, like four things in the fridge that you know are going to be easy, quinoa or other black beans or mushrooms, onions, avocado, you know, your salsa, homemade salsa. I always have salsa de molcajete. I always, because that goes on everything, you know, and, and it's just there. You make it that one day, but then you have it for weeks. Yeah. So I think we just, yeah, I think that helps a lot. All right, Jackfruit's getting ready. Let me see. Speaking of, I'll bring that out. This is also, we can do this another time, but yeah, we have homemade hot salsa de molcajete. This is like tomatillo, jalapeno, onions, garlic, and it's always in there. And good to go. You can even put that with your mushrooms. You can add that on everything. All right, so I'm going to get the jackfruit out of there. This is almost looking right here. We are almost done here. Getting there. All right. So, broth is cooking. I just opened up the pot of my broth just to give it some space there to breathe. And we're going to jackfruit. So, I pre sliced it as you saw, because if I were to slice it now, I'm going to burn myself. So, all, all these little things help. Um, so that's already pre-sliced, ready to go. We have my chile here that I blended really well. And I'll just give it a little taste. It's really red. I want you to see how red that is. That's gonna be a little spicy, but that's what that looks like. Great, it's got a little saltiness to it, but it's perfect. Once we add it to that, we're good to go. So we have, let's see, maize is gonna go in in a second, the jackfruit, and we are going to, this is ready. I'm gonna, I forgot I had um, my oil going. This is for, Tortillas, uh, tostadas. I want to make my own. So, so here we go. All right, let me let that simmer down. All right. So I'm going to lower the broth here. We're just on high. All right. I hope we can see this. Basically, it's going in the colander, the mesh, there, all of it. And so, you know, pozole, you have with tostadas, which I was, I have some here, but I decided I'm just gonna fry up my own. Because I have these organic tortillas that I get at Sprouts, um, so that it's just the ingredient is corn, which is how it should be. That's how grandma made my, you know, that's how my mom makes it. Like my grandma made it, it's just, that's the only ingredient. And so I found them. You can still, if you, you know, depends what store, but there are corn tortillas with just corn. So um, sure, I'll eat the, tor you know, other tostadas, but I, I just prefer making them. And you just, it's easy. You just get some oil. I have avocado oil. Avocado oil is really great on high temperature. It's one of the healthier oils. Um, and I just put my, I just make my own tostada. Again, not everybody has the step, you know, the time for doing these little things, but since the pozole didn't take that long, if you see I cut corners, you know, you can also, you have time to make your tostadas. And there's nothing like a fresh tostada, in my opinion. 
The air fryer also does good tostadas. <laughs> and that's way up here. Yeah. Or it could have baked it. You know, we used to actually, we used to bake them at one of the places I worked at Cafe Gratitude. And, um, and we used to bake them and they were great. I don't know why I didn't do that, but this is what's happening. But yeah, definitely. That's a really good idea. I need to get one. They're just so big, right? Unless I get a tiny one, like a smaller one. It does take up a lot of space, but it does do a good job. It's it does do a good job for vegetables, for other things. It's 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 quite amazing. Okay, then you're not the only person. I, I, I'm going to have to get, get on board with the air fryer. I've heard nothing but good things. I'm surprised I don't have one at this point. I'm very old school in some ways. I need to broaden up in certain ways with tools like that. I know that that's going to be good for me. All right, so... This is getting there. The reason why, um, even though that's a really great blender, the Vitamix, I still find that the thickness of the chile, of the skin, um, it tends to thicken up a little bit too much, the pozole, and I still like my pozole to be like thinner. So, I mean, you can try using the whole thing. It's not gonna hurt, it's gonna be delicious. But um, yeah, this will give you a, a thinner broth. So I like that, I get this. I've tried in both ways. And this is what's happening here. We got it going. All right. So that's that, that out of the way. And now I'm going to add my, my yeast. Careful with that oil. Just trying to turn this on. So that's that. And then my jackfruit. And then we're going to let that sit for about, this is really cool. I would say another, I would say another 25 minutes and you're fine. Another 25 minutes. But because of time, it'll be fine in 15, you know what I mean? But if you were cooking at home, just sit, cover it for, cover it for 10 minutes. And then you can open it up a little bit for the remainder, like 15 minutes or so. Total cooking time, 45 minutes to an hour. And there we go. And that's that, I'm gonna put that on high. Get that going. Let's see here, I wanna see this, how hot this is. I'm gonna try frying my tostada, but we'll see. This was a last minute idea. Nice, there we go, there we go. All right. So now we cut some cabbage and all the good stuff. My toppings. Radish. Thin slices. This is a great knife, so I get those really nice thin slices. All right. 
How are we doing on time? We have about almost um, about 10 minutes left. We're good. This is, oh, good. This is good. Yeah, so just gonna hit this and then I can serve it and it's good to go. This is done. So we got your lime and then cabbage, lime, cabbage, radish, and then I'm gonna add, which I just started doing avocado on top, which is really yummy. And it gives it even more of like substance and fat to it, which I really like. And I forgot to add olive oil, but I like a tablespoon of really good olive oil. It gives it nice fat because we didn't use any really, we didn't really use any fat. So I found find that a tablespoon of olive oil in the pozole gives it um, some body, which is really good. And then yeah, this is it. And then for the avocado, I do cubes and just top it off with that. And then top it up with salsa. Any finishing questions? No, what we like what we like to do is um, this this lives on forever in Facebook and through um, Instagram and all the other places. So what we do for each dish, we have the chef um, have the dish prepared and we take a photograph. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna get my. Do it. There it is. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like looking for my, my compañero because I, but I, he's the one who's in the man behind the Zoom and he's the one who can take the photo, photographs for um, okay. for future references. Yeah, let me do a nice, nice bowl. I have a nice pretty black bowl here. So how I like to serve it is I like to serve um, I like to serve with the maiz first, and then that's how you would do it. And then you finish off with the broth, because it shouldn't be more broth. Well, this is how my mom's told me. It shouldn't be more more broth than than like overpowering, overbearing with broth. It just be sort of just like coated in it. And then you can see how beautiful. Anyways, so you can see the purple maize. I mean, it just does something different, I think, than regular. All right. While you're making it pretty, Janet, um, Holly Lynn says, I appreciate how she shared the history of Pozole. Oh, thank you. I love that kind of stuff too. I mean, it kind of makes sense that it would be true, something like that. I don't know. Because so many things happen, like we're sacrificing of just many to the God they would sacrifice, you know, hearts and body. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, should I share that? That's kind of creepy. Oh, no, that's all that good stuff. That's what's so great about these programs is that besides learning technique, recipes, history is so important. Education is so important. Just adds mm -hmm. another layer of learning as we go through these online um, opportunities. Yeah, I thought so too. All right, so there's that. And then a little bit of salsa, hot sauce. And we're good. And then I like to finish off with salt, Malden salt, which is like a fancier, you don't need to use Malden, but it does, it's a nice flaky salt. That's just beautiful on top. And that's it. And All right. The okay. Si pozole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that again, please. Hold it up. Say pozole. Oh, are you ready? Should yes. Do it? Go. Okay. Pozole. All right, thank you. Yeah. 
Well, Janet, thank you so much for joining us today. And please keep us posted on your cookbook. Um, folks are asking about it. Plant-based is so important. Everyone's talking about it. And um, again, we'd love to have you at La Cocina when we're up and open, either teaching a class or showcasing your book. But in todo caso, thank you so much. Uh, please let our viewers know where they can, if they need a catering gig or what's coming up, how to find you. And then with that said, and I'll pass it off to Alberto, but where can we find you? Okay, so um, at organicinla.com, you can go online and you can see what I offer. I do foods, I do meal prep, I do um, catering, I do wellness retreats. Um, and on my Instagram, Chef Janet. That's it. Yeah, so and I'm posting like uh, different foods, whatever I'm cooking, or if you want to keep, you know, if you have any questions uh, about food and health related, shoot me an email. It's on there on my website or DM me. I'm more than happy to help or give it any information that I can help with. All right. Well, thank you. So that's uh, Chef Janet uh, at Instagram, right? Chef. Yes. Janet. Okay, and uh, I'm go ahead. I'm posting it on our on our on the chat, and I'm also posting it on Facebook. So thank you so much. And, and who's going to be enjoying that pozole this evening? That's a good question. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna enjoy that. Um, my dad's visiting soon, so there'll be plenty. Yeah, but it won't go to waste. <laughs> well, I'm sure it won't. No, and it's it just looks so soothing for uh these wintry days, these wintry evenings. Uh, oh, exactly, exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, Jimena, for hosting. And and uh, just one last plug for La La Plaza Cocina opening up next week, please. Yes, please come see us. Uh, we have a beautiful new space, um, inaugural exhibition on corn, and we have this beautiful tiendita uh, with things for your kitchen. So Valentine's is coming up. So go in, buy aprons, ingredients, lots of cookbooks. Um, again, Monday through Friday from 12 to 5. Please come and visit us. And, um, and thank you. All right, thank you. And La Plaza Cocina is located right behind our stage here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. It's, the address is 555. Uh, North Spring, you could park here at La Plaza's parking lot on Arcadia or anywhere around Olvera Street, but also at La Plaza Village, which is part of La Plaza's complex at, uh, at 550 Broadway, I believe. But you could see the sign for parking. Uh, come on in Monday through Friday, noon to five. We're looking forward to opening and we're looking forward to seeing you. Okay, well, thank you so much, Janet and uh, Jimena. We are now at the end of En Casa con la Plaza Cocina. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Kaiser Permanente and CVS Health and Aetna and Union Pacific Foundation and California Humanities, National Endowment for the Humanities and the um, Institute of Museum and Library Services. So thank you for sponsoring us and thanks all of you. If you didn't catch all of this episode, if you wanna see it again, uh, you could check it out. We'll be posting it on our YouTube page at La Plaza LA. It's on our Facebook at La Plaza LA and also on our website lapca.org. You could catch all of In Casa con la Plaza Cocina episodes, all our sessions, which uh, we're, uh, I know we're at at least 50, maybe even 60, but they're archived for you to enjoy. And uh, we have the, uh, if you could, uh, those of you on Facebook, just do show, shoot us a DM and we'll send you the recipe. We'll be sending the recipe to those that registered on Zoom. Y con eso, muy buenas tardes. Bye-bye, Janet. Bye, gracias. Bye-bye, Jimena. Gracias, Abelardo. Bye, everybody. Gracias a todos. Bye-bye.